coming. I'm Barbara Otto, president of Shipyard Trust for the Arts, who is, has produced this exhibit. And I, it's so great. I've recognized many of you. You've been here before. You've come to other events, even associated with this exhibit. So thank you for coming back. Enjoy some refreshments back there. You're free to get up and get them any time. And um, I'm very pleased. I'm not pleased that this is the last day of the show. I'm actually quite sad about that. <laughs> But I'm very pleased that we have our artists here today who will be talking about this whole experience about how the show came about. They worked for a whole year working with local community members to uncover their family's stories that are interconnected with the shipyard. And oh. <laughs> Inter interconnected with the shipyard and we discovered, and we already kind of suspected that, that the shipyard and the community's history are quite interconnected, and it is one history, and we're going to continue researching that, and talking to people, and finding out more, learning more, and strengthening the connection between the shipyard artists and the Baby Hunters Point community, because they, they are just one. Also, I wanted to point out that in two weeks, we have our Shipyard Open Studios event, uh, October 19th and 20th, 11 to 6 both days. We're going to have close to 140 artists open in seven buildings, so you can look around and uh, discover new artists, visit old favorite artists. And on the evening of October 19th, we're going to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the Shipyard Artists. And for that purpose, we have an unprecedented collaboration that really is unprecedented with the Navy and the city who gave us a license to enter the shipyard property that's normally off limits and work with two famous illumination artists, Ian Winters and Elaine Buckholz, to light up the famous shipyard crane. And accompanying that will be a, a set of musicians who are going to create a live soundscape, and that soundscape is going to feature some of the community interviews and other sounds from the shipyard. So it should be really an event not to be missed. You want to come and watch the crane illumination from here. Artists are going to be hosting parties in their studios. It will be a really, really great night. So now, for those of you who are new, let me introduce Stacy Carter. <laughs> Stacy has been at the shipyard since 1998 and she became fascinated painting the buildings at the shipyard, and then she wanted to learn more. What happened in those buildings? And so this is how her history project started. And now she teamed up with William Rose, who is our current artist in residence, and William has been working with seniors and uncovering histories of African Americans throughout the city for many, many years. And so, they were just a team made in heaven, and they worked with the local seniors, they interviewed them, found people who had parents and grandparents at the shipyard, even seniors who actually themselves worked at the shipyard. And so those stories are represented in the three quilts that William created, and Stacy researched the background, she annotated the quilts, so each picture has a story associated with it, and the historic background for that story is in the adjacent postings. So it's really quite amazing. The, the community interviews are, are available on these computers here. They're also available online on our website, very easy to find. So last request I have, we get funding from many organizations, um, foundations from the government, to put on these kinds of shows, and they want to hear how our audiences receive these events. So we have these surveys here, so if you could fill one out before you leave, or there's also another page with a QR code if you'd rather do it online, we would really, really appreciate it. So last but not least, I'm going to introduce our moderator, Andrea Baker. Andrea Baker is a Shipyard Trust for the Arts board member for many, many years. She is also the founder and executive director of Andrew Action, which is a local organization that teach, among many other things, I must say, teaches young Bayview entrepreneurs how to do, make a business out of their 
grandma's favorite recipe for gumbo or cookies or clam chowder or whatever it may be. And her trainees, so to speak, will be providing the soup, food service for Shepard Open Studios as well as the illumination at night. So without further ado, Andrea, on your And our audience, thank you. So that's the, that's the appropriate way to start. We want to praise them out because you have all seen the work, right? It's amazing. Praise them out again. Yes. <laughs> so here's how we're going to do this. We've got lots of questions, and I know you have lots of questions too. So I'm going to start with the first few, then I'm going to pause and see if you have any questions from the audience, because I want to make sure we get to yours, and then I can keep asking. So let's start with origin and inspiration. I'm going to ask you both. What inspired you both to start the African American Shipyard History Quilt Project? And how did the idea develop into what we all see here today? <laughs> Who wants to go first? Well, um, you know, I've been researching the history of the shipyard for at least 20 years now. Um, as Barbara had said, you know, I started um, uh, painting the buildings and then I got curious about what their use was and that led me down a 20-year road of staying up late at night and reading all kinds of historic context statements and, you know, delving into national archives um, and so the African American history was sort of it was part of this history that I actually, I had pictures of it, but I didn't really have that history. And not, you know, um, and I knew that there's a whole other experience out there, you know, in this neighborhood. Um, and, you know, I've been here for so long that I just, I have a, I've always had a curiosity and a desire to connect and, and dig up those stories and, and find out more. And so, luckily, uh, <laughs> for me anyway, uh, Barbara actually introduced us and recommended we, we get involved in this project. So um, that's how it started for me. <laughs> and so, he's amazing. <laughs> so for me, I, well, so I'm, I consider myself an outsider. You know, I, I've been in San Francisco for 20 years mm -hmm. and in this community, but still an outsider. And I'm very nosy and curious by nature. So working with um, the seniors, working with the African American community here, I felt there was an invisible wall that an outsider could not necessarily enter into. And I would refer to different people like this, my brother Malik sitting in the front row. I would come to them and ask questions. Why are things this way? Or not necessarily bad things, but just the information of how this place came to be, I was really curious about it. So it became like a thread, and I started following the thread backwards, going further and further back, understanding, you know, this, this community was known for so many positive things, but recently was known for the negative, the crime, the killing, the drugs, the violence, the gang violence. And as I walk, took that thread and started walking back, I realized that it all had a connection to a certain place, which kind of led me to the shipyard. Understanding what happens when you have this industrialized community take place and all of these people come together to work and create something, and then it leaves. And then you have a community left with, you know, like trying to survive without that industry or resources. So then you that you speed up to where we are now, and then you have people that have these stories of, they've lived through all of these transitions. Mm -hmm. And so, it was my way of really trying to dig in to find out what was this, what led to where we are right now. That's, that is so important, as well as, so a lot of the history here involves trauma. And so, storytelling is such an important part of getting that trauma out and sharing the stories. So I'm wondering how you went about involving the seniors in this project and what you believe they brought to the project. Uh, <laughs> start. Uh, 
Well, for me, uh, you know, getting together with William and he was, you know, doing the quilts and there were these, you know, art classes basically. Um, so where I came in was I started uh, presenting history workshops for the seniors and many of them I had known ahead of time through you that, you know, they had connections to their family members or some kind of tie to the shipyard. And um, so I started just bringing in the history. I brought photographs. I brought, uh, you know, the working shipyard. I mean, there are 18,000 people that came here to work in World War II, which is mind-blowing to me. And, um, you know, and for a lot of the seniors, like, they didn't really know, at least the you know, people that I work with, they didn't really know a lot about the hands-on jobs, you know, what actually their family members did or, you know, and so to have the photographs, you know, I brought hundreds of photographs and just would lay them out on the table and everybody would just be like, oh my god, you know, and, and, and then it was a matter of sitting back and listening and, and hearing what came from them, which was amazing. Um, it's one thing to read about history in a history book or, in a, you know, document, but when you actually hear somebody saying, oh, no, I, you know, we were sharecroppers and we moved, you know, it, it was impossible to live that life, basically, mm -hmm. you know, and why people came out here. And it, it was just, I forget the question. So, you know, you know, know, this, so yeah. did people bring their photographs to you as well? You had a collection. Well, I, did yeah. Did people bring their photographs? Um, not necessarily. I'll, I'll you know, go fast. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was actually bringing in, you know, photographs and it would just, you know, it, it, it would start an exchange. You know, they would start telling stories about, oh, yeah, my dad did that job. My mom was a welder, you know. And then um, it, it's like, it became like an exchange. I don't know how to say it. Then they would fill in the rest of the story for me. Does that make any sense? No, that does. And yeah. so then how does the story tell me in fact the quilts? Oh, in a huge way. So it was directly from the images that Stacy presented to the class. It also came about because the seniors would add certain pieces to the quilts. The thing is that I love Many of the seniors didn't really think they had any value or any stories to even share. So they, so when you would talk to them, they were like, well, "Why are you asking me these questions? And what?" You're like, you know, yeah, my grandfather worked there, whatever. But then it began to be a thing where people really realized how important it was. Part of that also came out because there was a lot of secrecy. Yes. You know, the shipyard, all the mystery behind it. The, you know, of course, you guys know the toxic stuff, the, the secret testing, all of that took place. So people were in these little silos. So if a guy or a lady came home from working at the shipyard, you know, some of that stuff she couldn't talk to her kids about. Some of that stuff she didn't want to talk to her kids about. And so it was all of this stuff. So some of the people, the seniors in the class, they were learning the history with the images and discovering I mean, I don't want to mention that, that our key thing, but we had several seniors that literally were like in shock and started crying because right. they couldn't believe, they saw images of, of parents that they didn't even realize worked there. Yeah. yeah. So that was just crazy. They were like, are you sure this is, and you know, you had the information to back it up. Yeah. So it was all of this kind of stuff being unveiled that started to pop up. And it wasn't an unveiling, I think, you know, it, you know, because it was each each new discovery was yeah. with, and it built the trust between, you know, you know, that I'm bringing what I have, but then they were giving so much back. I mean, mm -hmm. it blew my mind what I learned and, and from their experiences, and, and like you said, how the story started to come forth. Um, I started with the, uh, taking people's names, actually, um, because there's, you know, the dry docker newspaper was a newspaper they published every Friday that the shipyard was under Navy control so for years, you know, decades, uh, this newspaper. And, you know, so there's no searchable archive to look up people's names, but I would go into the National Archives and I would look manually through them. I had a list of the seniors' names and their, and their relatives, and I just literally was like, this is a long shot, but why not? I'll just start looking. And I found a few people, it was amazing, amazing. Um, Claire Caldwell, her mother. Um, you know, I was like, well, I, you know, her last name is Love, I'm not sure if this is her, you know, I brought it in, and it was just, just 
amazing. It was like magical to see her say, oh my God, that's my mother. And wow. she didn't even know she worked here. She, um, it was two years before she was even born. Um, so just to see, you know, see the seniors be able to reconnect to their ancestors, mm -hmm. right? it, it was just, so you guys are being so like these archaeologists and really on the earth information oh. and stories. And how do you go about then deciding which ones to tell? Because there's a ton of them, I'm sure, right? So how did you decide to tell the stories that you told? I think through just the interest and enthusiasm. Because, yeah, we work with a lot of seniors. That doesn't mean all of them necessarily wanted to participate. <laughs> um, See, but, Chrissy again? Yeah, it could have been. It, yeah, whatever that reason was. So some of the, like, even the art, you guys, if you get a chance to look at some of the art, this is produced in this area by seniors, you know. A lot of them are in the interviews because they were actively participating, really engaged in that. So that's, that is... Please tell me if I'm wrong, but I feel like that was one of the major reasons to determine who we were going to work with. Mm -hmm. Really just, you had that fire to... to that you to, wanted to engage them and have them do that. And, yeah. And they really, they started to just open up, you know, yeah. and, and once that, that, that initial step was kind of cracked and they started talking, it just, it all opened up and it just, you know, the story just came out, you know, and... It just got richer and richer as we went. <laughs> yeah, so I kind of think, this is my last question for you all for now, and I'm going to open it up. I'm kind of feeling that there's this really interesting thing about quilts, right? Because quilts are how we told our stories and carried them along back in the day when we couldn't write it down and what, that was not the way to do it. And now we are... <laughs> how many hundreds of years later, we find ourselves in a time when our history is also being discouraged. And so it's sort of interesting, here we are again, we have quilts telling our history again. So I just think that's a kind of an interesting sort of circle, and yet at the same time it does lead me to ask, how is quilting changing? And what is the future of quilting? And how will the stories continue to be told, do you know? I don't know anything about quilting, so I'm asking a question, right? First thing, I, in a million, if you would have paid me a thousand bucks 20 years ago, there's no way you could have convinced me I was going to do any quilts. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I still don't classify myself as a quilter. There are so many quilters out there that are just amazing. Quilting came about for me because it was an entry point. So if an entry point was metalwork, glass blowing, toothpick making, I would have used it to get in the door with, I don't do um, It was an entry point, and people in the community could relate to it. So I could come to them and say, man, I want to hear your stories, and we can, you can add to this as a community offering, and quilting was the thing. So, and the demand for like the stories and the interest and everything, it really started to be like the quilting took on a life of itself. So when I was a kid growing up, my family used to quilt. I didn't want to be around that. I didn't, not that it was bad, I just didn't feel like I wanted to run and play or tear up some stuff, you know? And I didn't want to like sit in a room boring making a quilt. But that was the thing. It came to me and the people could relate to that. And that, again, that was my way of getting in the door to make it work for the community. Well, I'm going to pause and get some questions from the audience, and we'll start here. Do you want me to just ask a question? Please. Yes. Okay, so, um, the young lady here didn't tell us where she was from. Are you an original person? Um, <laughs> I hope I'm an original person. Yes. <laughs> but uh, I was born in uh, Cape May, New Jersey on the East Coast and uh, moved out here after I graduated. I went to art school in Philadelphia, taught our school of art, and um, came here after I graduated in 1991. 
and I've been an artist here at the shipyard since 1998. So I'm, I'm asking that because he said he was an outsider. Ah, so I have I have some questions related to your position as outsiders. Mm -hmm. So from a real estate development point of view, uh, I'm curious. Do you know <clears throat> does the shipyard neighborhood have one way in and one way out? How do you mean that? Do you mean it figuratively? Well, or so I live in Marin, uh -huh. and Marin City yes. uh -huh. is a cousin of the same, like they did the same yes. things. Mm -hmm. There was, um, we talked about trauma. Um, there was one There's one way in and there's one way out. Right. Mm -hmm. So when, when I'm thinking about kind of, you talk about your journey and your entry, is I hope that that story is told about the red lining yeah. and oh, yeah. the separation. Oh, yeah. And so mostly what's important to me is what kind of impact does this storytelling have on the built environment? And, and are you going, does Lennar have a relationship?